This is a warning to the citizens of Austin. Stay away from the university. There is a sniper on the university tower firing at will. Another shot. We hired good people and we had good reporters. They said, uh, after it was over, I, I was being interviewed by a news organization. They said, well, well, Neil, did you put in your emergency plan immediately on getting the word? I said, hell, we didn't have a plan. A special program on today's mass murder in the capital city. Here is KTBC television news editor, Neil Spells. Good evening. One of history's worst mass murders occurred here in Austin today. By official count tonight, 49 persons were hit by gunfire. There are 16 dead and 33 injured. This is a magic wand that cast its spell through the air and onto the screen of your television set. Austin, Texas was introduced to the exciting new world of television in 1952 when Lady Bird Johnson's KTBC signed on the air. Four years later, a young University of Texas journalism student named Neil Spells got hired on as a part-time reporter. We had huge audiences, obviously, we were the only station in town, and we carried uh, programming from all three networks. The station soon moved into a new state-of-the-art studio at Tenth and Brazos. Move Jerry to his left, truck right. By the early 60s, Spells began to take the reins of news director from veteran journalist Paul Bolton. Paul, we'd like you to meet the uh, city of Austin. I believe we've met. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who was going into semi-retirement and young UT grad student Gary Pickle had worked his way up through the ranks to a photographer gig. As far as news in Austin, it was hard to come by. I mean, there wasn't anything spectacular going on. As much of our time as not was spent covering service clubs, uh, flower shows, I mean, just whatever they could dream up to, to make a newscast out of. But on August 1st, 1966, that would all change. Sat down and made sure that we had uh, everybody out covering news, uh, made the assignments, and then I started preparing the radio newscast. And uh, it was just a normal day. Five decades have passed since that routine morning in the KTBC newsroom. Meanwhile, Charles Whitman, engineering student, ex-Marine, managed to climb to the top of the UT Tower armed with guns and ammo. He had already killed his own wife and mother earlier that morning. He came here to kill more. New staffers like Neil Spells and Gary Pickle were about to find themselves on the most dangerous assignment of their lives. And I heard on the police radio uh, just a, a routine call. It was something like, um, Unit 254, we have a report of a shot being fired at the University Tower. That was it. Okay. After sending reporter Phil Miller and photographer Joe Lee to the tower, Spells wasn't far behind. He jumped into one of KTBC's mobile units called Red Rover and started broadcasting live on KTBC radio while driving toward the tower. This is Neil Spells and Red Rover on the University of Texas campus. This is a warning to the citizens of Austin. Stay away from the university area. Traffic is now converging on this area and there is a sniper on the university tower firing at will. Several persons have been injured. We have no reports on whether there are any fatalities, but we do know a boy riding a bicycle has been shot and seriously wounded. The sirens were screaming. People were screaming. Gunshots were going off. Meanwhile, back at the station in Tinth and Brazos, after racing to the fourth floor to get camera gear, Gary Pickle, David Swope, and reporter Charles Ward got into a van used to haul equipment, the only vehicle left. On the way to the tower, they listened to Spells describe the danger they were about to walk into. Another shot. The sniper just fired another shot, apparently more or less in our direction. When they got to campus, the three commandeered a window office in Bats Hall facing the UT Mall. It was there Pickle captured the picture and sound that's told the story of the shooting for the past 50 years. Reporter Charles Ward described what he was seeing. There must have been a hit that last time. We hear people outside of our building in an area where we can't now look safely saying, let's help that boy. Every time, you know, there'd be a, a report and a puff of smoke would go on, you'll probably notice watching the footage it jerks because that was, that was me uh, jerking because uh, we just didn't, we didn't know what, what to expect. This, as I said, this was completely out of our realm of experience. After more than 90 minutes of horror in the intense August heat, it was over. 
This is Neil Spouse with a bulletin from the KTBC radio newsroom. The sniper is dead. Pickle's crew went out onto the mall to capture what he describes as the gory aftermath of Whitman's rampage. Of course, this was all black and white film, and uh, some of that was lost because there was no red blood to see on, on television. But there was plenty to see on the scene, and it was, uh, it was pretty horrific. Pickle says another KTBC staffer had brought him a reload of film, a good thing, because it did run out. I went into the bathroom at uh, Ransom Center, the men's room, and uh, sat on the floor in there and pulled some paper towels out of the canister and crammed them under the door so that the light wouldn't leak under, because I didn't have a changing bag or anything. I just had to make do. And the main thing I didn't want to do was to uh, expose the footage I'd already shot. The shooting hit home for the KTBC newsroom. In the midst of the chaos, Emeritus News Director Paul Bolton came back to the station to help with the coverage. During a radio broadcast, Joe Roddy read the names of the dead. Sontag, uh, Roy Schmidt, One of the names caught Bolton by surprise. Joe, hold it on, hold just a minute. This is Paul over at the newsroom. Interested in that list of names? I think you have my grandson on there. Go over that list of names again, please. It was Bolton's grandson and his girlfriend, killed by Whitman while going into the co-op to buy books. Maybe 18 years old, and they were both killed by a madman. Well, that's horrible in itself. But to have it occur in the midst of or as part of a major news event, and this was one of the primo journalists of the area, I kind of, you know, I think it had more of an impact on him. That evening, Channel 7 aired a special program featuring interviews with Austin police, a civilian, Alan Crum, who helped take Whitman down, as well as a chilling report from KTBC reporter Phil Miller, who was first on scene and had often found himself in the line of Whitman's fire. And I was just about 10 yards away when I heard the rifle on the tower and the patrolman fell to the ground. For young photographer Pickle, the sleepy college town of Austin had changed forever. I know the word surreal is thrown around a lot now and people use it to describe everything, but it really was like reality had completely changed in Little Austin, Texas. It, it had done a 180. We were living in some sort of an altered universe. Spouse, Miller, Ward, Pickle, and other KTBC journalists had put their lives in danger for the sake of telling Austin and the world what was happening. I, I don't think I ever lost focus. I don't think I ever got concerned. I was not concerned about my safety, uh, maybe stupidly, uh, but uh, but I you know I was I was duck, ducking down. I, I wasn't standing up being a hero. I was just trying to say, okay, this is what's going on. These images were captured half a century ago now. Neil Spells and Gary Pickle have been telling the story of what happened that day for just as long, and they're proud of the journalism that came from KTBC. How do you react? So, you know, some people may go crawl under a desk. Some people may jump up. What can I do? Sort of thing. Channel 7 had a building full of people saying, what can I do? These people, these ordinary people, really rose to the occasion. And I think you see that a lot in journalism, throughout journalism. People, it's a calling. Casey Claiborne, Fox 7 News.